and welcome to the LIBOR manipulation case study with focus on Deutsche Bank. My name is Sharon Williams. On April 23, 2015, following a guilty plea to the US Department of Justice, Deutsche Bank was fined a record 2.5 billion US dollars and ordered to terminate several employees as a result of their manipulation of the London Interbank Offered Rate, known as LIBOR. LIBOR is one of the most influential rates in the world as it underpins trillions of dollars in lending products such as mortgages, student loans and credit cards, as well as commercial financial products. I chose this scandal because of my keen interest in the highly successful corporate so social responsibility performance of Deutsche Bank. I came across their involvement in the LIBOR scandal via the LinkedIn news feed and it instantly piqued my interest. At the time of the manipulation, the LIBOR was calculated by 16 global banks, each submitting an estimate to the British Bankers Association of what rate they would be charged if they were to borrow from another bank on the London interbank market. The highest and lowest 25% were discarded and the remaining figures were averaged to obtain the daily rate for LIBOR. The rate was then calculated for five different currencies and ten dif seven different maturity lengths. The first warning sign was in April 2008 when a Barclays employee admitted to the New York Fed's markets group of using false information to set the LIBOR. Later that year Barclays was subsequently fined $450 million US for conspiring to manipulate the LIBOR. In 2012 investigations into 16 banks found evidence showing upward manipulations by traders colluding with rate submitters to achieve higher profits on derivatives and downward manipulations during the GFC to do boost market confidence in the institutions. October 2013, media in Germany reported Deutsche Bank had commenced talks with some 50 employees into possible manipulations of the LIBOR. The statement of facts released by the US Department of Justice revealed that the manipulation acts took place in New York falling under US jurisdiction. There were, however, seven executives in Germany who were ordered by the courts to be terminated, as well as ten employees terminated by Deutsche Bank during the investigations, including the managing director of the London office. Deutsche's 2015 annual report states that they established a committee to prepare a statement of response to the investigation. This wasn't quick enough, though, as evidenced by the severity of the fine being due to their delayed response to the investigation. Shareholders responded in anger at the 2015 AGM, with a 5% owner calling for management changes, stating they no longer had confidence in the management board. At this year's AGM, a shareholder called for a special audit to determine whether heavier fines were due to the board members breaching their obligations. The public's response centres on a diminished confidence in the financial industry as a whole, they no longer trust the industry to set its own standards for ethical behaviour and do not have faith that there are sufficient corporate governance practices in place. Some homeowners have responded by seeking compensation from Deutsche Bank through civil actions which are still pending resolution. The term cosmetics earnings management has been suggested in the LIBOR case where rates could have been manipulated by simply rounding them up. However, there is stronger evidence to suggest that the manipulation was a directly fraudulent activity. There were manipulations in the period of the GFC where banks wanted to appear more credit worthy, but this was achieved through direct falsifications rather than creative interpretations and policy choice. Deutsche Bank has shown promising steps forward in accounting disclosure by including details of the LIBOR investigations in their annual reports. Continuation of this would be essential to gain back customer and stakeholder confidence. It has been described that the LIBOR rigging involved a cartel because to have significant impact, a number of submitted rates would have had to be manipulated. This is deemed a significant corporate governance failure, particularly in a, such a highly regulated industry that had undergone a number of corporate governance reforms after the Enron collapse. Evidently, the LIBOR rate had not shifted in a year leading up to the day the GFC hit. So why were there no corporate governance practices in place to detect this anomaly? 
The scandal highlights serious questions around the bank's ability to police itself and the role of senior management in monitoring the activities of their employees. Consequences of interest include Deutsche's two joint chief executives resigned a month after the fine, an ex-Deutsche trader charged with felonies and banned from working in the UK's financial services industry and a trader ordered to be fired now seeking unfair dismissal citing sexual discrimination and punishment for whistleblowing. Key items in the Deutsche Bank's 2015 annual report include downsized traders division and segregation of traders from rate submitters nil shareholder dividends for FY15 and 16, suspension of management boards, variable compensation due to ongoing litigation cases, undisclosed legal provision held for ongoing libel investigations, and lastly, integrity committee focusing on remediation measures and the lessons learned in order to prevent future, future litigation cases. <music> has learned from this rake rigging lesson and now the LIBOR is overseen by the Intercontinental Exchange with rates calculated using actual transactions. Deutsche has created a control group to oversee the LIBOR, invested a billion euro in upgrading systems and controls, acknowledged its prioritisation of profits over rules and apologised for its failure to cooperate with regulators. Deutsche is still struggling financially, in part due to the LIBOR fine, with Bloomberg reporting this month that the bank's problems may be insurmountable. However, in the words of Paolo Coelho, you do not drown by falling in a river, but rather by staying submerged in it. So with the number of changes in place, I would anticipate Deutsche recovering from the ordeal. That concludes my presentation for today. I hope you found this topic as interesting as I did. Thank you for your time.